Step 1. I mean, I do, I do think the further you get away from something that is a failure, it becomes more and more positive. So like I, I, uh, I, I worked for several years before I started making games again, like before I made the static speaks my name and bucket detective, I basically, I went to film school and then graduated and was working in the film industry in New York and was and wrote some feature films and really wasn't getting anywhere with them. I, I not only could I not get them funded, I didn't even know how one went about being rejected for funding. You know, I didn't even know like who to talk to. Yeah. And at the time, that was really really frustrating because I was writing these like five million dollar movies, and I was like, I just need they're so good, I just need five million dollars. But ultimately, it kind of you know, and at the at the time, it was like I felt like the stuff I was writing was just so not even though I thought it was cool, it felt very different than what other people thought was cool. It was like that, that was like when superhero movies were coming big. And it was just like, I'm just not making that kind of stuff. But it, it, it's what pushed me to be like, okay, what can I make on my own? If, if I don't have to like, if no one's going to give me money, I'm going to go sit in my room by myself and start making shit. And so that's what made, you know, that's what set me down the path of making video games. Ladies, my name is Jack Sipsky, and welcome to a game called The Static Speaks My Name. Hello, everybody. My name is Markiplier, and welcome to The Static Speaks My Name. Now, I have been very much recommended to play this game. This game is called The Static Speak My Name. Is this my house? Why do I put? That is just a waste of electricity. Why did I board this shit up? Why is this all boarded up? What's my unhealthy obsession with this painting? What the fuck? There's a dude in a cage! Oh, I'm getting like shivers up my back! Hi! One of the shrimp in his like eating bowl. What is this game? Are you painting these? Step 2. Step three. Do you ever wish yeah. you could psychologically manipulate your way into like, uh, like you know, like in the SpongeBob movie where Plankton had all like the chum bucket hats on? <laughs> I, I haven't seen it, so I don't, what, what did it do, what did it do for him? What does oh, the hat do? Basic. All right, so in the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Uh, Plankton's secret plan is, you know, he gets this, he gets the Krabby Patty secret formula, basically, and he's, so he's selling a bunch of Krabby Patties, and he's selling these okay. bucket hats. That and that, is that food? I, I'm sorry, I literally know nothing about SpongeBob, <laughs> so that's, all the references are lost. It, Krabby Patty is like a popular food? Yeah, it's like the, it's like the fictional food that they, the f sea creatures eat in Bikini Bottom. It's like... Gotcha, Okay. It's like a fast food equivalent, but the important part is, so he's got everyone wearing these hats and then he like hits this button and then like the, the hats are like bucket shaped and the buckets go down on their heads and they're like, and they start saying all hail plankton and like, right. he, t he takes wow. like mind control like that. <laughs> I'm saying, um, <laughs> I'm saying, uh, do you wish you could, do you wish that the world kind of worked like askew to you like the world revolved around you so you could get these things done man that's a, uh, what a deep question for a arts management course uh let me think do i wish the world revolved around me um i mean you know well i can say with networking if i w like it probably when i was younger i like pushed myself to do more shitty networking where i'd like go to networking events and be like oh i should talk to these people and i i i 
so when I was younger, I wished I could do that a little better, but I just have a really hard time faking my way through stuff. So, I mean, in theory, I wish I could, but I, I can't. So, um, but I don't know. I mean, yeah, do I wish the world was more geared towards, man, I don't know. That's a good question. Cause it's like, I don't know. I feel, I guess I feel happy with how things are now. I mean, I wish maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know. That that's, a, really that's, a, that's a tough question. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like I'm trying to think at which level to answer that. Like, <laughs> and I'm just like waiting like dumbly for a response like. <laughs> yeah, no, great. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. I'll just have to maybe if I think of something, uh, something that makes sense. Because to me, it's like, well, like on the one hand, someone might be like, oh, yeah, I wish the whole world would bend around my will. But then also then I'm like, OK, well, if that started happening, what is like it does everything lose its fulfillment? You know, because like I like I, I'm as a, as a very like weird tangent, like I have been training uh, doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for like about a year and a half now. And on the one hand. I'm like, it's like, I don't know if you know much about it, but it's really, really hard. Like you spend your first, honestly, your first couple of years getting your ass kicked just constantly. And so on the one hand, it's like, yeah, I wish that I was like instantly great at it. But at the point when I get my black belt, which will be, you know, 10 years from now, it'll probably be one of the greatest accomplishments of my life. So maybe you don't want the world fully bending to your will because then, because then you can conquer it. I don't know, something like that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there is no, there is no uh, joy in the conquer if you... Uh... Yeah, and I don't know. I think a lot of challenges have really pushed me to, to um, like, like artistically, have really pushed me to become better. So I, I think in a way I'm kind of really thankful for those. And you mentioned off. Have you seen the movie Office Space? Oh, dude, I love Office Space. Dude, yeah, it's I gr love so good. Office Space, it is so yeah. fucking funny. I cannot. Yeah, I no, it's one of the. Office it's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's an important film, man. It really is. Like it's. It's the nightmare which which many of us need you know seek to avoid. I think. It's very true. And it happens just like that. Anyways, yeah. there was, uh, there was um, something I wanted to ask about. Wants to know, or I want to know how uh, <laughs> video games have affected your life. And then my friend wants uh, to know if you think you're dumber for having them in your life. Assuming they are. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think video games have mostly affected my life positively. Uh, I think that video games are one of those things where it's like it's like movies, you know, or TV. You can watch the worst, dumbest movies and become a dumber person, or you can watch, you know, incredible, like, challenging, thought-provoking, experimental, cutting-edge stuff and become more interesting you know and, and learn about the world and I, I think that so so i mean i i do think they've affected me positively in some ways and i mean obviously since i make video games i've been affected by them in in good ways but but no i, I don't think i'm dumber for it I, ju I do think though that as i get older i feel like the medium doesn't grow up with you as well as it as other mediums do like, I feel like the person, you know, there's a lot of movies and music and books that are made for people who are, like, in their 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s. And it's like the number of games that are like that is very, very slim. You know, I, I feel like the majority of games are still targeted at, like, 13-year-olds. So you have to search a little bit harder to find stuff that is kind of interesting. Right. Yeah, that's an interesting point. But I think there's a lot of really cool, uh, or okay, maybe not a lot. There's a, definitely a handful of really cool, interesting stuff out there, um, and and so it's definitely a medium that is is worth time. And I actually kind of pride myself on like when I have friends who don't play video games, I'm I will I have many times sat them down and been like, 
let me show you what video game what some like video games you've never heard of you know and i'll show them things like you know that game plug and play or the stanley parable or the witness or you know just things that are like a lot of people who don't play video games maybe don't understand the depth of the medium cool i want to talk about like any is there any economic principles or ethics such it is kind of personal when it's like you know you're just you working that's basically just asking you like what you're trying... <laughs> yeah um... i'm trying to ask you but like in a not like like obviously i don't want to know how like you spend your money i just want to know like <laughs> what principles you know guide you know what you choose to pursue yeah uh i would say like i feel like if there's anything i can be it's a voice for a slightly alternative way of living and like it's not like i'm doing anything particularly crazy but like i mean definitely something that i do is i try and spend as little money as possible and like i really do believe that like you have to take stock of what if you're going to try and be like an independent artist what there comes a time where you have to decide are things more important to me or is my freedom more important to me and if things are more important to you i'd say don't try and be an independent artist but if your freedom is more important to you which it is for me like spend as little as you possibly can because it's kind of crazy when you you can almost like become you can start to live in a way that you require require such a low amount of money to sustain yourself that like no one can control you and i don't mean in like you know some paranoid type way but it's just like when you like don't need to work because you like have a cheap apartment and don't buy that much stuff and all that like it it it, it really frees you to be like very artistically bold and to take time on projects and to like experiment and so that's my biggest principle is just like, cause, cause I'm sure you've heard the term golden handcuffs, but like I, I see it with many of my friends and it, it's not a judgment. It's just like, you'll see, you see people get a good paying job and then they start to like, Oh, well I'll get a nicer car or like I'll get a more expensive place. They're like, yeah, we'll go on this vacation, but we'll stay in a nice hotel. And like very quickly you, you can't like, you start to get into a situation where you can't easily back out of things. So you're like, oh, now I have a car payment. Now I have a this payment. But so I like the fact that, I mean, I, I just, I have so little requirements that I kind of have a certain amount of freedom that people with more money don't have, which sounds like I'm Damn. Like that does sound lying. Cool, but though. Uh, I, yeah, it's awesome, know, I, man. I, I don't want to... You know, I don't want to make it too personal, but break that down for me. Like, how do you, how do you, uh, how do you save? How do you, uh... Well, that's another thing. So I don't know, maybe I'm not the best person to give financial advice, but I also don't really, I have a different relationship to my, my, my parents would, uh, my mom's like, w would be, her teeth would be like hurting if she heard this interview, but I really kind of don't. At this point in my career, I actually kind of don't believe in saving because to me, it's more valuable. Like my time is more valuable than an abstract future when I'm like 70. And I'm talking about like saving for retirement. Like, I don't know if that's what you meant, but I mean, I, I think that I use all of my money to buy my time now. And if I can just like, yeah, I just, I, I do not like if, if there comes a time where I'm like, you know, I make, you know, I get inundated with hundreds of thousands of dollars and it's like, Oh, I could save. I'll do that. Like, I'm not going to be an idiot about it, but I, I think that, I, I think that saving for retirement is a little bit of a, not a myth, but like a, it's a trap people fall into. Right. Cause like if you, if you make your now moment suffer because of 65 years from now or like, you know, 45 years from now, I think that's a bad mistake. Like I literally, okay, this is. Yeah, that's cool, man. Well, my, my advice would just be 
uh, make as much stuff as you can and, and use the making of stuff to, uh, to, to help you figure out what you want to make. I think to me, the biggest, like I can tell you from having many friends who have gone on to some, some success, they, uh, the biggest difference between people who make it and who don't is I, I think a lot of times the people who don't make it are too precious about what they make and what they put out. And the people who, who do, you know, quote unquote succeed, just make a lot of shit. And I think that that's, I don't know. So I would just encourage you, man. Yeah. Just make a bunch of shit, experiment, have fun experimenting and put it out and see what people say. And just don't, don't be, yeah. Don't be shy about it. I don't want to give, I feel like I, this is terrible advice that no one should take, but I, let's just say I've joked with uh, a, another friend of mine who's a writer where, you know, cause this is a conversation, especially writers have, because I think of the whole pool of artists, God, writers just have the hardest time because yeah. it's just, it's just really hard out there for, for like selling your whatever. So, but anyway, I was just like, look, if I can live this way, like a lot of people are like, well, what happens when you turn 75 and you are, you know, you start to get Alzheimer's and you can't work and like, you know, what if you have no money saved? And it's like, literally, bro, you like, if I got to live this free for the next 40 years and then I'm 75 and it's like, oh shit, I should have saved for retirement. It's like, you know, I mean, the, the thing I jokingly, I, you know, jokingly say is I'll just fucking jump off a building, man. It's fine. Like, it, I don't need the comfort in some abstract future, which I could get hit by a car, you know, when I'm 40. And like, you just kind of have no assurances. And so, again, this is not me encouraging anyone to bank on like my 401k is suicide. I mean, you know, I'm kind of kidding. But like, I don't think people need to be idiots. But I also think that there needs to be a voice on the other side which is like you know people have been sold or chosen to buy, buy into like a false safety net that will come in some abstract distant future right. and they sacrifice the present moment for for like you know to to have that safety net which may or may not ever come in useful Step seven, repeat with verse. New chores, yeah. New freezer shit, new nigga. You could tell by my demeanor. So I'm, I think you, when you export that file, you can call it A plus video essay, because that's what you'll get. <laughs>